hi guys hope you're doing great our today's question is word ladder given two words begin word and end word and a dictionary's word list find the length of shortest transformation sequence from begin word to end word such that only one letter can be changed at a time each transformed word must exist in the word list note that begin word is not a transformed word note return 0 if there is no such transformation sequence all words have the same length all words contain only lowercase alphabetic characters you may assume no duplicates in the word list you may begin you may assume begin word and end word are non empty and are not the same okay so it has covered a lot of base conditions for us so we don't need to really bother about those so for example the begin word is hit and the end word is cog and the word list is given as such. We need to find the length of the shortest transformation sequence in which we can convert hit into cog. But the condition is that we can only change one character of the word at a time. And that character that we have changed and the word that we get after changing that character should be in the word list. Right? And we need to return the shortest such transformation sequence. So for example here, these are the given list of words. Right, So we convert hit to hot and just transforming I into O. Right, okay, And then hot to dot, so just H is being replaced by D. Then dot to dog, then just T is replaced by G and then dog to cog and then we have our end word which is cog okay so um, <clears throat> the answer that we have to return is five okay another example is hit cog but now the list is different and there is no way of transforming this hit to cog because of the given words here so we, re we return zero right okay so um, our input is an array, an unsorted array, and let's have a look at the various approaches we can take. So pause the video, think for a moment and come back. Okay, so this question has a lot of components to it, and that's why understanding which approach to take is not very straightforward. However, there is a slight hint of us trying to use a collection um, and just, you know, trying to traverse the array in a way that we are able to find that transformation sequence, right? Um, so in questions like these, uh, guys, um, it's always important to understand that if you have seen this question for the first time in the interview, right, um, preparing for your interviews by doing a lot of questions will definitely help you in in suggesting good approaches, right, uh, which might be impressive to the interviewer, but but you cannot guarantee of being able to derive the solution, right, or the the best possible solution in the interview, right. So don't be um, intimidated by the thought that how would I think of such an approach in the interview. These questions not only help you understand the solution for this question, but they also help you develop. An approach right so so there might be similar questions out there and after solving this you will know that okay there is this way of solving this question and you will be able to apply that so that's why practicing data structure problems is extremely essential because you you have to understand the question and the underlying concept that we are using in the solution and that is what helps you cover a lot of que similar questions. And that's why we focus in our videos on, on the approach to solving rather than just the question at hand, right? So, um, all right, so we will be taking this approach. We'll be using a collection, okay? We'll be traversing through the list of words and that is how we'll be solving it. And I hope the solution will get clear as uh, we develop it. So the idea behind it would be that we want to compare the, wo the word at hand with the other words in the array, right? In the word list, in the dictionary. 
and see if it is adjacent. Adjacent means just one character away, right? So we replace one character and we get that word, right? Once we have got that word, we don't want to come back to that word again for this, from this, at least from this word, right? So what we do is we remove it from that list, okay? And we want to put this word, which we have just transformed into something. So we put that into a queue, okay? Then we pull the word from the queue and we find its next adjacent word, right? So in this process, there will be words that will not be adjacent and we just ignore them and move on to the next word. And we might also reach dead ends where we don't find any adjacent words. And that's what, th that is when we get to know that, okay, there's no transformation sequence possible for this, right? Um, so yeah, that is roughly on a very high level, the approach. Let's start developing and it will get better. Okay, so first of all, um, what we need to do here is, that if the length of the begin word or the end word or the word list, if either of these is zero, then our answer is zero, correct? So that's a base check that we just have to make. It's always good to make such base checks because that gives the interviewer an impression that you do have, you're thinking beyond the question, you're thinking for every aspect of the question and trying to cover a lot of base cases as well. And that, that definitely is a desirable quality to have in any candidate. So, yeah. Okay, so in any of these cases, we just have to return what? Zero. So now we, we have to find the length of the transformation sequence, right? So whenever we are traveling from one word to the other, we are, we are adding one more to the sequence till here, right? Because we have added one more word in this sequence. So we, we want to maintain that length as well. And that's why we need a structure that stores this string, right? And also the length of the transformation sequence we have used till to get to this word, okay? And to represent that, we will create another class. Let's call it just, uh, just this, okay? Um, and it has the string, okay? Which is the word. And it has an integer called length. Just let, let's keep it this. And we just need a constructor, okay, word and integer length. Oh, sorry. So this dot word equals to word, okay, and this dot length equals to length. Okay, cool. Now, <clears throat> what we'll do is that I was saying, as I was saying, we'll keep a queue, okay. Um, so we'll need a queue of type objects, right? And let's just call it this. Link list is the implementation of queue in Java. So yeah, you might want to keep that in mind. Okay. And to the queue, we will add the begin word because it's not part of the dictionary, right? So we just want to add that because we want to start from that. So we just add the begin word to it, okay? Um, yeah, but we have to create an object out of first here, yeah, okay. This, and it's just one, right? Yeah, okay, fine. Now, we want to keep traversing till the queue has something, right? It's not empty because it means that we have something to consider which might give us the end word, right? So that's what we do. And as I was saying, we'll just pull out the current word uh, that is at the peak of the queue. 
so we'll just do a q dot pole okay we just get the first element that is at the top of the queue okay or the front of the queue so we have the current word now the, which is represented by an object and now we want to find the next element that we can use right so what we'll do is that we'll have to compare this with every other word in the word list and see if we are able to find a word that is adjacent to this word okay so um, what we do is that we just so we can create another method called is adjacent and we will give it the word of current right and now for all the other words so we need to iterate through this word list and we will be using a list iterator here the reason is that when we find a word that is adjacent to this current word we want to remove it from the list and if we just iterate through it simply using a for we cannot remove it while we are we, while we are traversing through it right whereas using a list iterator we can do that so so this question not only teaches you how you can encapsulate information into an object but it also teaches you where to use what constructs of java to to tackle your problems better right so what we'll do here is we'll create a list iterator iterator of type string okay and let's call it itr equals to word list dot list iterator okay okay fine so now just like any iterator we'll say as next so while it has more elements okay put this here right and let's first get the word so this is just a string so um, let's call it tem and idr dot next so we get the word right and then we give tem okay so we'll get to what we need to do but let's first implement is adjacent method so this method of ours is a very very simple one it will return us a boolean value yes or no if they are adjacent or not okay and we'll just get two strings s1 and s2 right and we know that by the question that all the words are of the same length right so we don't have to worry about one string being shorter or longer what we just have to do is that um <clears throat> yeah we just have to create this for loop traverse till any of the two strings length okay and compare the character at i okay so if the character at i in s1 is not equal to the character at i in s2 we are okay with it being not the same once okay just once because that will be adjacent right if it's not then we have to ha have to have a count which we'll just declare here goes to zero okay and we increment the count right now we check that if our count is more than one okay it means there have been more than one characters which are not same in the string we just straight away return false okay, okay. now once this is done just to just in order to be careful about the last one so we'll just return count more than one return false okay 
else return true. Okay, so this is the implementation of is adjacent. Uh, now here, <clears throat> if we find that this is adjacent, what we have to do is that first of all, remove this from the word list, okay? Because we have, we are going to be consuming it now, right? So we just remove that. And then we have to create another object, right? So, or we can just directly q dot add new object and we give temp as the word. <clears throat> And whatever was the length for current, we are adding one more word to it. So <clears throat> one to it, we add one to it, right? And we check that if temp is equal to, okay, that's a string, so dot equals, if this word is equal to the end word, right? Then we have what we needed to get to, right? So we just return, current quote dot length plus one. Okay, because we have arrived at the end word, we don't want to deal with the queue anymore. We don't want to find anything else. We are where we wanted to reach. So that's the end of the story. Otherwise, we just keep going. And if through this whole while, there was no such instant where we could have returned something, it means we have not found anything, right? So that, because that's that's also a valid case. In that case, we have to return a zero. Okay, looks fine. Let's see if this works. Mm. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry about that. Okay. Oh, we named it just L E N. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's submit it. Great, it works. Okay, so <clears throat> time complexity. So the time complexity for this solution is O of n square multiplied by k, where k is the length of the largest string in the given word list. That's because we are traversing. So first of all, we are traversing through all the all the um, strings in the given word list using the queue and then for every string we are also traversing through the whole list iterator and then we are comparing that string with all the lists uh, all the strings in the list so that multiplied by the largest or the longest string in the word list so that gives us an o of n square into k time complexity and the space complexity is O of n because we are using a queue to store this exact same elements again in the queue. So I think it should be O of n. So I hope you learn a lot of aspects, not just to solve this question, but also in general problem solving from this question. If you do, please like, share and subscribe and keep coding and take care guys.